Hello there. This is an astrological forecast for Cancer for November of 2013 and also applies if you have a Cancer Ascendant. So my dear Cancerians, big focus on relationships, work, finances, much happening for my lovely Cancerians, I know. And with Jupiter in your sign, however, until June, July of next year, I hope that you're taking a few more risks than you might ordinarily have done. So on the 3rd of November, we've got a new moon solar eclipse happening in a house that's already got a lot of planets in already. So much happening for you in this fifth house. We've got the sun here, we've got Mercury and Saturn and now this solar eclipse. So for the fifth house is all about your creative energies, your creative juices. It could also be affecting your children. It would also be very good for anybody in the entertainment field. Anything involving musicians, artists, um, anybody that does any kind of craft work, interior design, architects, people that are creating something, anything that's very creative and of course the technological field can be very creative as well. But this is really wanting you to highlight the creative energy within you, those creative juices that are unique to you. It's about your uniqueness, Cancer. Yeah, not about hiding in the background. Some of you hide a little bit. This is about you coming out, um, shining. Where do you shine? What are your unique abilities? If you're in business for yourself, there may be some adjustments to be made, some changes need to happen, or you may decide it's time for me to get into business for myself. And that too can be happening with such a big focus in this fifth house. It's also a time to be thinking about romance, romancing yourself, doing nice things for yourself, but also romance in your life. It could bring some new romance, a new romantic connection into your life. I would say to you that the Mercury, sorry, Mercury, Mercury is retrograde, it's doing my head in. Um, Mercury is retrograde for the first 10 days of the month. So I would resist doing anything um, very speculative during the first 10 days of the month, especially. Um, the fifth house is the house of gambling, of speculation. You might be tempted to take a risk. And what I meant by risks with Jupiter in your sign is obviously taking calculated risks, not silly risks. And here with this Mercury retrograde, um, I'd be very careful for the first 10 days of the month, especially with any kind of contract negotiations while it is retrograde. When it goes direct, then yes, you might want to have a little flutter. That would be all right. Although with Saturn in this fifth house, um, I really wouldn't overdo it because Saturn can also indicate that you need to be watching your money as well and not being flighty with it. Not that you are flighty because Cancerians, many of you, you're very good at shrewd business people. Now, for the first Four days of the month, we've got Venus here in your sixth house of work and health. Um, be careful when Venus is ever in this sixth house. You may be tempted to very sweet desserts, to very rich foods, so be careful you're not overdoing it, but it's only there for a few days anyway. But also it's a good time for anything connected with the workplace fellow workers, employees, people you work with. Uh, it could be something nice happening in those first few days of the month. The significant happening for you Cancerians is that Venus, planet of love and money, is moving into your seventh house on the fifth of the month and stays there for four months. This is very unusual. Usually Venus stays in a house for maybe three, four weeks at the most. The reason for that, so it's there until March the 5th of 2014, and that's because it goes retrograde next month. But I will definitely go into a lot more detail about Venus retrograde for you next month and what that means. Because especially this Venus is going to affect your relationships. And boy, Cancerians, your relationships have already been affected. You're already going through a lot of changes there. Venus is going to help. It's going to make bring some harmony. 
For those of you who are single, it can bring a romantic relationship. No question about that. It can also bring somebody back into your life from the past. It's also very good for any kind of business partnerships that you're in. Also good for client relationships and bringing new clients. It's also going to be a time when you're going to go deeper into relationships, wanting more depth, more connection. While at the same time with Jupiter in your first house, you're going to be wanting freedom as well. So it's going to be interesting to see how you're going to uh, bring this into balance. But it certainly should be a very powerful time for your relationships. Powerful and exceedingly positive, potentially, good time for you and your relationships. Now, on the 17th of November, we have a full moon here in your 11th house. These moons, they, they come in pairs and the solar eclipse, one should always look at the two houses involved. So on the 17th of November, this is going to be a great time for me meeting new friends, making new friends, joining an organization that you thought might be interesting, maybe going on a course where you can meet like-minded people. It's also a very good time as well to be re-evaluating your goals, your dreams. What is it you're working towards? What is it you want? It's important and will be good during the first 10 days of the month while we have Mercury here retrograde to be re-evaluating those goals and dreams and wishes um, and to see whether anything's changed or whether maybe you've got some of those things that you wanted and maybe it's time to put something new in there to add something new and this full moon in Taurus here is going to also shine a light on your friendships. Maybe there's some friendships that need to go, that need to change, maybe. Maybe a friendship can become a love relationship, or vice versa. But there's certainly going to be some changes in the people that you want to associate with. You may find that you've grown to a certain level that you want to associate with some different people now. Different kinds of people. And it's important with these aspects that you're putting yourself out more to meet those new kinds of people. Good time for visualizing what it is that you want. You're a water sign cancer, you're very good with visualization. Take some time every day to really visualize, feel and sense what it is that you're wanting in your life. And on the 22nd of November, the sun moves out of this fifth house and into your sixth house, shining a light on your health. Good time to do something healthy. Good time to um, look at your daily routines, your daily habits. Um, are you rushing around? Are you taking time to eat quietly without a lot of other things going on? It's about looking at your daily routines and shining a light on them and helping you to improve them. This is what this sun should do. It should also bring some opportunities in the workplace for you. Maybe a new job opportunity or um, being promoted. These are possibilities with the sun moving into that sixth house for you. So there you have it, my dear Cancerians. There's a lot going on. I would say enjoy having some leisure time in your life. There's so much happening in this fifth house. This is the play time. Have some play moments. Enjoy some fun moments. Make sure you bring that into your everyday life. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for commenting. I really appreciate it. Bye for now.